Hello, welcome to High Ground Gaming. This is Eric. And tonight we're going to play another game from 1978 Stratomatic Replay featuring the Boston Red Sox. Uh, this is game number 24 of the Red Sox season. Uh, game number two of a two game set, short two game set against the Minnesota Twins um, from Fenway Park. A game that took place on May 4th of 2000. It's May 4th of 1978. And it'll be Paul Thomasgard going for the Twins against Dennis Eckersley for the uh, Boston Red Sox. So without further ado, let's get this game underway. Welcome to the stadium for today's ball game. Thank you for joining me, and um, we have another kind of a weird, weird uh, lineup for the Red Sox again today, um, as we did yesterday in um, the first game in the series. Looks like we have Rice, Lynn, and Carbo out in the outfield, so I don't know if Evans is, is hurt or had an injury or something like that for part of the season or for a couple games or whatever. And on the infield, Jerry Remy is not in the second game also too now yeah I think he did Jerry Remy did DH so maybe he was having some I don't know maybe some issues or something like that that were keeping him from playing the field and he was just DHing so it'd be interesting to see what the, I didn't check what the lineup was on the opening screen there so we'll, we'll see when the Red Sox come off the bat what what that case is but it looks like Evans might be out um, I don't know if he's available or not to check real quick, so let's see. Yeah, it does look like he's available, so and Remy is not here, so Remy is in the starting lineup as a DH. So, so not the best Red Sox lineup, um, but we'll see what we can do here. So, all right, so Dennis Eckersley will start for the Red Sox and. He has a record of 3-2 and two on the season with an ERA of 3.15, 40 innings pitched, 33 hits, 8 walks, 18 strikeouts, and has allowed 4 home runs. And the lineup for the Twins is as follows. It's going to be Hoskin Powell leading off and playing right field. Batting second will be the shortstop, Roy Smalley. Batting third, the first baseman. Rod Carew, batting cleanup, Mike Coverage, the third baseman, batting fourth, I'm sorry, batting fifth, center fielder Dan Ford, the DH today will be Glenn Adams, batting sixth, I mean, uh, seventh will be Rich Childs, the left fielder, batting eighth will be Rich Weiniger, catcher and the second baseman Bob Randall will bat ninth. So Jose Morales was the DH yesterday. He is not playing um, and Rick Craig Kusiak was the left fielder. He is not playing either. Rich Childs playing left field. But other than that the lineup is pretty much the same. It's like Yep, pretty much the same. So, alright, so let's get this game underway. 
Hoskin Powell is hitting 254 with a homer and 13 runs batted in so far. So Eckersley looks in from the sign from Fisk. He has the wind up in the pitch. And the ground ball to third. Hobson comes up with it. Always an adventure when Hobson gets it, but he's able to retire the first batter of the game. And that's how we'll begin. All right, Roy Smalley up now, hitting 314 with a homer and with three homers and 15 runs batted in. And it's going to be up for Eckersley four column, which is good for him and for the Red Sox. Fly ball center field, range check on Fred Lynn. He should have no trouble range-wise. And he's going to make the play for the second out of the inning. He has to go a long way for it, but ends up making the catch to the warning track. He leaps in the air and has it, so it wasn't as easy as it appeared. All right, next up, the now first baseman, Rod Carew, who played second base early in his career. Switched over to first. So Rod Carew is currently hitting 396, 386 looks like. I wish I could make these numbers bigger. <laughs> um, still looking to get, try to stretch out these uh, the cards here, the Stratomatic, the blue and the red cards here. For some reason I can't get it to get any bigger than that, but I, I know there's a way to do it. I just don't know how to do it. Uh, but that would be nice if I could fill this whole box with the card and uh, make, you know, make text bigger. I've seen other people do it. I just don't know how to do it. So if you if you happen to be watching this video and you know how to do it, please let me know so I can uh, you know make this a little bit nicer. Maybe even fill down towards the bottom all the screen here. Um, you know, make it bigger, make it feel bigger, and make the cards you know a little bit more. Fill in some of these all this space here. Sorry about that. It was just my MLB alerts there on my phone. <laughs> Astros beat the Braves tonight. <laughs> so, all right. Um, so, Rod Carew steps to the plate. Two down and nobody on for Eckersley. Be off of Carew's two column. Definitely is not his best column. So, be ground ball to Yastrzemski. And he'll wave off Eckersley and run to the bag for the out. So, all right, so let's look at the Red Sox lineup against Paul Thormis guard. Paul Thormis guard comes into the game with a 2-2 two two record, 3.41 ERA. 34 innings pitched, 38 hits allowed, 4 walks, 11 strikeouts, and has allowed 1 home run. So the Red Sox lineup is as follows. Rick Burleson, the shortstop, will bet first. Joey Ramey is the DH tonight. For the second straight day, night, whatever. <laughs> second straight ball game. So he's probably dealing with some kind of injury there. Um, the manager doesn't want him. Zimmer does not want him playing in the field. Or well, maybe it's by his choice. Anyway, uh, Jim Rice, the left fielder, will bat third. Cleanup hitter is the captain, Carl Yastrzemski. First baseman playing first base tonight. Batting fifth will be the. Behind the plate will be Colin Fisk. Center fielder Fred Lind bats sixth. Butch Hobson, third baseman, bats seventh. That's one that should be he should be playing DH all the time. <laughs> Batting eighth will be the right fielder Bernie Carbo. And playing second base for the second game in a row will be Jack Brohammer. So alright, so Rick Burleson leads it off. Off to a great start in the season with a 3.23 average with 11 runs batted in. The rooster looks in, looks in for the pitch. Going to be out the four column of Thomas guard. It's going to be a ground ball back to back to the pitcher, and he is a four range, so one through four will be a hit. Oh, he gets up, gives up a lot of errors, so. He is going to field it, but it looks like he's going to make it. No, he doesn't. He finds the, the one spot 
one of the only one, two, three, four, five spots on the card that uh, that are not errors. Well, six being a rare play, but it wasn't pretty. But he handled it to get the out. So Thomas guy can only pitch seventy-two pitches before he gets tired. So. He will definitely, he makes it to the fifth inning. That's a, that's a good start for him. <laughs> so he was one, yeah, he was just one and six on the regular season with a 5.05 ERA. So it looks like 81 hits allowed in 66 innings. So he did not have a good year. So the Rem Dog, Jerry Remy up now, DHing today. Off to a great start, hitting 340 with nine runs batted in. Thomas Guy looks in for the sign. Corners are playing in and for Remy. Here's the windup and the pitch. Off the six column. It's going to be a pop up to. So it's going to be a line drive to Randall, the second baseman. He'll make the catch. Two up and two down for the Red Sox. Jim Rice up now. His average is slowly creeping up. 289. Five homers and 17 runs bat in. He'll be the AL MVP. Going to be off the film that's got four column. And it'll be a base hit just past Smalley into the outfield. So Rice is on with a two out single. Brings up the captain, Kyle Yastrzemski, hitting 244 with three homers and nine runs batted in. Rice takes his lead. Here's the wind up by Thomas Guard in the pitch. And he has his three column, which is a nine. It's going to be a fly ball to right. And Powell slides and makes a great catch. So that'll wrap it up for the Red Sox. After one full, no score. Mike Cubbage comes to the plate now. Third baseman is hitting 380 with a homer and seven runs batted in. Seven right bats, so he's off to a great start. So Arthur Z looks in from the sign from Fisk. He delivers. It's going to be after his four column, which is where we like to see. It's going to be a range check on Lynn again. Should have no problem with this one. He's an excellent defensive center fielder. Red Sox definitely do not have their best outfield in there with Rice and Cargo. It's probably actually their worst defensive uh, outfield, as far as, at least as far as range goes. All right, so Dan Ford will be up now with a one out. He's hitting 268 with eight runs batted in. He'll be off of his two column. There's a strikeout for Eckersley. So Eckersley will record his first strikeout of the day. 19th of the season. Second out. Glenn Adams up now. DH today. He did not play in yesterday's game. He's hitting 317 with three homers and 12 runs batted in. He got his one call. He's going to be a fly ball to right. Carbo's under it and he's got it. The so twins go in order. And after one and a half innings, no score. Red Sox will send Fisk, Lynn, and Hobson up against Thomas Guard this inning. Fisk is hitting 285. 295? 295. 295 looks like. The three homers and nine runs batted in. So, all right, so that's better. We found our glasses here. Um, let's see. So Fisk is... 295, much better. I can see them much better now. Three homers and nine runs batted in. So he'll lead it off for the Red Sox here in the bottom of the second. And it's going to be a Thomas Scott's four column, which is a single. Ford's over, throws it back in. So a leadoff single for the Red Sox. 
Brings up Freddie Lynn. Hitting 278 with six homers and 13 runs batted in. The offensive throwing start six call. It's going to be a range check on Mike Covich, and he's got the range of Butch Hobson, but does not commit as many errors. Not nearly as many. So one through six will be a single. And it's going to be a no doubter single, and there's going to be an error. No. So it's just a clean single for Freddie Lynn. And see what happens here. They're probably going to hold Fisk up at second. So coverage was playing a bit too shallow there, and it got past him pretty fast. Runners on first and second now with nobody out for Butch Hobson. Speaking of Butch Hobson. He is hitting 273 with two homers and 10 runs batted in. So Thomas Guard looks, looks at the runners. Gets the sign from Weininger. Here's the windup in the pitch. Enough. Hobson's two column, which is the worst column. Arguably his worst column there. I don't know, his three column isn't that great either, but come on, seven. Oh, he'll strike out. Way out in front of that changeup. So that brings up Bernie Carbo. In 240 with a homer and nine runs batted in. And his three column, not his best column either. And he'll strike out too. So, two straight strikeouts for Thomas Guard. So it'll be up to Jack Brohammer. He's hitting 500, seven hits and 14 at bats. So off to a great start, playing part time. See what he can do here. See if he can continue his hot hitting, and it's going to be off of Thomas Guard's six column. And it's going to be a soft line drive to Randall for the out. So. Red Sox get the first two runners on, but cannot capitalize, and after two full, there's no score. All right, that'll bring up Rich Childs. It's Rich, isn't it? I believe so. Yes, Rich Childs. He is hitting 087, with just 23 at bats. He looks in for the sign. Is the windup in the pitch? And the offense leaves five column, which is a fly ball to center field. And should be able to handle this one. And he does for the first out of the third inning. All right, the catcher Butch Weininger now. Scuffling so far at the bat, hitting just 194 with four runs batted in. It's going to be off his two column. It's going to be a fly ball to center, and Lynn is under it, and that'll be the second out of the inning. Now we're the number nine hitter, Bob Randall, hitting 329 with 10 runs batted in. Back in his five column, it'll be a ground ball to short. The rooster is up with it. And Ori Yastrzemski. And, ooh, it looks like he made a really good play on this one. Let's see here. Ooh, nothing exciting there. Said it was a rare play, but. I mean, he, uh, or a really good play. <laughs> anyway, that'll do it for the, uh, Twins here in the top of the third. The Red Sox come up in the bottom of the third. Still no score. Top of the order. Rick Burleson will lead it off. He's 0 for 1. And he will strike out swinging. So Thomas Guard now has three strikeouts on the day. Bring up the Rem Dog, Jerry Remy. He's 0 for 1. Ground ball to second, it'll be a range check on Randall. 
He's at two range. Comes up with it and is able to get Remy over to Karu. Second out of the inning. And we have Jim Rice. He is one for one. Single his first time up. Carry off his two call, so anything but a one is not going to be good for him. I mean, a two isn't going to be good for him. And it's a fly ball to center field, and Ford is under it and makes the catch. So the Red Sox go in order in the third. Still no score, and headed to the fourth. Top of the order, Weiniger. After Eckersley has set up the first, set down the first, I mean, uh, Powell, sorry. Eckersley has set down the first nine twin batters. He offered a six call. <laughs> and it's going to be a hit. It's a sharply hit single. Powell must be a uh, weak hitter. The left side of the plate, anyway, against righties, because that normally would have been a home run. First hit of the game for the Twins. To lead it off here in the fourth. We have Roy Smalley. 0 for 1 in the day. He bunts it. It's popped up. It's Copper Eckersley. Powell has to scamper back to first. No play by Eckersley. So he's unable to get the bunt down. Brings up Rod Carew. He's 0 for 1. And looks like Powell's going to try to steal. Eight, 80%, an 8% chance. Not much of a chance for me to get it, get him out then, so I'm gonna hold on to the ball. So Powell's able to swipe second. So running scoring position now for Carew. And we have fly ball to right. Carbo is under it. Carbo makes the catch. And he moves to third as the throw comes in the second. So, two outs in Powell on third now. And Mike Cubbage. 0 for 1 in the day. And he swings and misses, strike three. Didn't have a good cut at that one. And that'll do it for the Twins here in the top of the fourth. Red Sox will have Stremski, Fisk, and Lynn. He has his 0 for 1 so far. Ooh, looks like he's going to get his pitch here. And he does, and he rifles a single into the hole. Just past the outstretched dive of Peru. Powell's able to get it back quickly, as Stremski was thinking too on that one. Brings up Fisk. Single his first time up. Ooh, and Fisk is going to get his pitch also. Oh, unfortunately, he finds the only spot on there. One of the only spots on there that's bad. <laughs> and he strikes out. So he gets him for the first fourth strikeout of the day. So I'll bring up Freddie Lynn now. He was also one for one. Single his first time up. And it's going to be a pop up. No, actually, it's not. It's going to be a base hit to the right for Lynn. Now we're going to hold these jump skis. So again, runners on first and second for the Red Sox. For one out. And Butch Hobson up again. Let's see what he can do. Unsuccessful the first time he came up in this situation. And it's going to be a range check on the pitcher. And he's going to come up with it, but is he going to handle it cleanly? No, this time he doesn't. The film is guard. Boots it. And we're going to score that in E1. His jump skill take third. Lynn will take second. And now 
Hobson takes first. The bases are loaded now for Carbo with one out. Excellent opportunity here for the Red Sox. And he's going to get his pitch. Come on, baby. I'd love to see an eight on this one. But we'll settle for that. It's a five. So one run will come in. I'll send the lead run here. Why not? One out there. We're gonna say we're gonna we're gonna have to try to come. We're gonna hold the trailing runners up. And ooh. So wow. So there's a 14 right on the edge, so the catcher has a chance to block, but his ability to block is only average, and the four is not good enough. As Lynn will score the second Red Sox run, so Carbo has a has a two RBI single. So the Red Sox take a two nothing lead here in the bottom of the fourth. Brings up Brohammer with runners on first and second. Still only one out. He does not get his pitch this time, and he grounds out to Carew. Flips over to second for one. Back to first. Double play. So a three six three double play. Limits the Red Sox damage to two. And Eckersley takes the mound now in the top of the fifth with a 2 nothing lead. Let's see what Dan Ford does in his second at bat. So he's going to get his pitch this time. And he'll rifle a single just past Burleson. So the corners will play in now. Adams. He's over one in the day, and it looks like Ford is going to try to steal on this one. Oh, what's happened there? No, wait a second. No, it's a hit and run. Sorry. Stremski takes it to the bag himself. So the hit and run prevented the double double play there. Twins stay out of the double play on that by sending the runner. So running in scoring position now with one out. The Rich Childs. Glenn Adams, and this is Rich Childs. I guess I say Rich, Rich Adams, but it's Glenn Adams. It's going to be off of his one column, so it'll be ground ball to short. Russell looks the runner back on the first, and he's out. So Ford has to stay at second. Winding her up now, 0 for 1. And it's going to be a range check for Fisk. Gonna field the grounder. And we'll make the play on to Yastrzemski. Score that a 2 3. Halfway through, it's the Red Sox 2 and Minnesota nothing. Brings up the rooster, Rick Burleson, 0 for 2 on the day. Columbus guard back out there for the fifth. Nearing his limit as he's pitched 66 pitches out of 72. Boom. Burleson's going to get his pitch on this one. Possible home run. And it's a long back, 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 and gone. Into over the green monster. Into the netting. And the rooster has himself a solo home run here in the bottom of the fifth, his first of the season. Got all of that one. So Red Sox now have a 3 0 lead. Brings up Rem Dog. Fly ball to center. Ford is under it, makes the catch. So Remy's now 0 for 3. So Rice up now, 1 for 2. Ooh, and Rice is going to get his pitch here. Oh, he just misses the triple. Going to go into the wall and decides to hold up at second. So he's going to settle for a double. Just missed that one from going out. So one out and running Rice is in scoring position for Yastrzemski. He's one for two with the run scored. The Red Sox offense starting to come alive. Yastrzemski is going to get his pitch. It's going to be a single to right. 
this time we're gonna hold rice. Don't want to go to the well too much there. With so runners in the corners for Colin Fisk. It's one for two in the day. And pitching change. So that'll be throwing this guy will come out now. He's walking slowly to the dugout. So Mac Scars. Scarce or Scarce. <laughs> yeah, I haven't heard of him yet. We'll come on to the bottom of the fifth. So he's pitched six in th six innings in three games and has a 0-0 zero zero record. No record with a 7.50 ERA. Probably why I haven't heard of him. He's awful. <laughs> in the actual season, he was 1-1 one one with a 3.54 ERA and 32 innings pitch. But he's allowed... So far this season, he's pitched six innings, allowed nine hits, three walks, and seven strikeouts. So he'll face Fisk here. One out and run is on the corners. And the ground ball, third base A, and they're going to turn two. So a 5-4-3 double play. Well, maybe we should have sent the runner. Hopefully that doesn't come back to haunt us. No guarantees on that if he would have scored though anyway. But it's a 3-0 Red Sox lead as they tack on another run. Apparently they knocked Thomas Guard out of the ball game. The book is now closed on Thomas Guard. Brings up Bob Randall against Eckersley. It'll be the 9-1-2 hitters. So Eckersley looks in for the sign as the wind up in the pitch. And it'll be a strikeout. Chased it. Chased it. The breaking ball for strike three. It's Eckersley's third strikeout of the day. Bring up the top of the order, Hoskin Powell, one for two. And he's going to get his pitch. And it's going to be a single up the middle. Just past the outstretched Burleson. Roy Smalley will be up now, 0 for 2. It's going to be a hit and run. A low change up by Eckersley. Smalley chases it, manages a slow bounce at a Burleson. Tosses it to Brohammer, getting the force on Powell. The way he backed in first is not in time. So they still are able to get the lead runner despite the hit and run. Just missed the double play by a step. So two outs now for Rod Carew. Oh, for two in the day. It's gonna be a fly ball to Carbo. Back pedals up with the glove and it's out. So twins are unable to score. So, Scarce out back on the mound. Trailing by three. Twins are. Fred Lynn comes to the plate now. He's having a great day, two for two. He's up to his average to 296. Two for two and a run scored. Let's see if he can go three for three. It looks like he's gonna, no, it's not his pitch, but yeah, that, that's pretty much his pitch. Uh, however, he pops it up. We will make the catch for the first out. So, Lynn is retired for the first time today. The chops in him out, hitless on the day, 0 for two. He's going to get good wood on this one. Unfortunately, just not enough. It's going to die at the warning track, and Childs will make the catch. Just not quite enough for Hobson. Carbo up now, one for two. Had a two, up, two RBI single in the fourth inning. Put the Red Sox on the board. Sometimes grounds out to short, I mean to second. Randall's up with it over to Carew. And that'll do it for the Red Sox in the sixth. So, Twins will send up Cubbage, Ford, and Adams against Eckersley, who's been very economical. He's pitched just 71 pitches in six innings. He's only allowed three hits. So it's going to be Cubbage's one call. And the ground ball to Brohammer, Ovi Yastrzemski. First out of the seventh. 
Because he's cruising right along. Dan Ford up now, one for two. He's one of the twins. One of the twins' three hits. And he'll ground the Broham also. He's a flips with Odia Stremski for the second out. Brings up Glenn Adams, the DH. 0 for 2 in the day. And he'll hit a fly ball to Carbo. Routine fly. He ranges over and reaches up, and that should do it. So seventh inning stretch time is the trivia question. In 1959, what Pirate pitcher pitched 12 perfect no-hit innings only to lose the game? So. I have absolutely no idea. 1959, what Pirate pitcher pitched 12 perfect innings to only to lose the game? Have any idea, Al? <laughs> or Ron Juckett if you're watching this? Or anyone else? I have no idea. <laughs> Here we go. Here's the answer. Harvey Haddix. Joe Adcock of Milwaukee doubled in a run to beat Haddock 1-0 in the 13th. Harvey Haddix. Never even heard of him. <laughs> Alright. So home half of the 7th. Bohem will lead it off. 0 for 2 in the day. Scarce out for a third inning. And Bohammer will single up the middle to lead it off here in the seventh. Brings up Rooster Rick Burleson. He homered his last time up. 1 for 3 in the day. That two for four as he singles to right. And we're gonna hold Brohammer at second with nobody out. So the first two runners on for the Red Sox. Brings up the Rem Dog, Jerry Remy. 0 for 3 in the day. Corners are gonna play in. Remy's gonna square around to bunt. Eighty-six percent chance. Oh yeah. Lays down the bunt, looks good. No chance to get the runner going to third base. Remy might beat it out. And safe. Remy beats it out. So the Rem Dog beats it out. And the bases are loaded with nobody out. So great. Such a great bunt. They're unable to get anybody. And that'll load the bases for Jim Rice. All right. So this is an awesome situation as Rice is two for three in the day. Love to hit one out here. Infield's gonna play in, down by three. This could blow the game wide open if Rice gets a hold of one here. Oh, it's not gonna be Scarce. It's gonna be Dave Johnson's gonna come in here. So let's look at Dave Johnson's record. He's at 0-1 record with a 4.15 ERA. He's pitched four innings in three games. So we'll see what happens here. So we definitely want that one column if possible, or six column with for Johnson wouldn't be bad either, but we really want that one column. And the four or five are no doubters there. And instead we get the six column, which isn't necessarily a horrible thing. So it isn't gonna be a grand slam, but let's see what happens here. And it's gonna be a single just past Smalley. One run comes in. And they're going to hold Burleson at third. Still nobody out. So, Bryce comes through with an RBI single. Red Sox lead is now 4 nothing. Bases are loaded with nobody out for Yastrzemski. Also having a great day. He's 2 for 3. See what happens here. And it's going to be off. Ooh, possibility of a grand slam here with the number 8, 11, or 12. In a low number. Let's see what happens. No, it's going to be a single though up the middle. One run comes in. And they hold Remy at third. So they're going station to station. But two runs are already in. The Red Sox lead up five to nothing now. 
So again, the base is loaded for Carl and Fist this time. It's his turn. See what he can do. Love to get that three call. And another pitching change is Dave Johnson is ineffective. Well, it's two straight singles. See who the next guy is going to come in. Another Johnson. So, so Dave Johnson is going to be replaced by Tom Johnson. So Johnson and Johnson. <laughs> so Johnson is replaced by Johnson. Let's see if this Johnson can be better. <laughs> And this inning is brought to you by Johnson & Johnson for great baby powder. <laughs> Let's see what happens here. Oh, a five column could be a good one too. It's a ground ball back to the pitcher. He is a three rating. And I was hoping for that six through 10 there. That would have been awesome. There's still a chance of a hit here. Looks like he's going to field it all right. No chance of an error, so they'll at least get one run. <coughs> See if they're going to go for home. Throws the second for one. Back to first. Double play, but one run will come in. So the Twins would gladly trade two for one there. It's now a 6 nothing lead for the Red Sox. Rice goes to third. Fred Lynn, he's also 2 for 3. The Red Sox have managed to score 14 hits today so far. With that 15 hits as he knocks in a single, and Rice will come home for the seventh Red Sox run. So they got four runs this inning, just not on a grand slam, but they'll take it. Brings up Butch Hobson 0 for 3. Twins bullpen falls apart. And it's time to ground ball to his counterpart. Over to first, and that'll do it. The Red Sox put a four spot on the board, and after seven full, lead it seven to nothing. The Red Sox fully in control. Eckersley out for another inning. Thanks to the Johnson and Johnson fiasco there. All right, so here we go. It's going to be off the three column of Rich Childs. And it'll be a strikeout for Eckersley, his fourth of the day. Which Weiniger up now, 0 for 2 on the day. And, ooh, <laughs> 1 to 17 would have been a hit, and it's not. It's a comeback right to Eckersley. He's on the first for the second out of the set of the eighth. Time running out for the Twins now. Number nine hitter Barb Randall for two on the day. And he'll get himself a single. So only the fourth Twins hit of the day. Up to 93 pitches, so still looking fresh. Hoskin Powell. Probably the best Twins hitter today. He's managed a couple hits off for Eckersley. Two for three. And he's going to get a hold of one. Unfortunately, again, he's a weak hitter. That would have been, it could have been his second home run of the day. Instead, it's, they have to settle for a single. Randall will move over to third, so run is at the corners. Roy Smalley. 0 for three on the day. And the, oh, it's going to be a wicked curve. Golf's at the center. Lynn won't get it. Scoops it. Fires it in. Thought that was going to be an out, but it wasn't. So Twins get on the board. 7-1 now. Brad Carew up now. Red Sox action. The Red Sox bullpen. It's going to fly ball to right. Carbo is under it. And that'll do it. So the Twins advantage only one run. And after... Seven and a half, the Red Sox lead is seven to one. Excuse me now. Let's see here. Eckersley pitched a complete game. 
allowing. Huh. Ironically, that's wow. Four hit. It's the four hitter, allowing one unearned run, two walks, and two strikeouts. So, pretty similar. So we're gonna bring out Eckersley to see if he can close it out and get a complete game like he did in real life. The Red Sox won eight to one. Very close game. Now it's seven to one here. So very comparable. So Bernie Carbo will lead it off for the Red Sox here in the bottom of the eighth. It's one for three with a two-run single. The Red Sox on the board. And he's gonna have his second hit of the day. Johnson's back out there again. Do they have a third Johnson that can come in and relieve him? <laughs> I'm just going to check and see if they do. I'm just curious. No, no other Johnsons in there. They have an Erickson. He's a starter and he won't come in. Do they have a Johnson in the bench? They do not. <laughs> that would have been funny. All right, so Carbo gets himself a clean single here. Brings up Rohammer, one for three. And it'll be a strikeout. That's Johnson's first strikeout of the day. This Johnson, anyway. Rick Burleson up now. He is two for four with a homer. And the ground ball to third, over to second for one. Back to first. Double play. The Red Sox score, do not score in the eighth and head to the top of the ninth. With the Red Sox seven and the Twins one. Beck is lead back out there trying to close it out. Up to 99 pitches. Mike Cubbage 0 for 3 on the day. It's going to be a single up the middle, so. So Dan Ford up now, one for three in the day. It's going to be a fly ball to left, shallow fly ball, rainbow shot. Rice reaches up and makes the catch. Hasn't played perfectly on that one. So Glenn Adams 0 for three in the day. It's going to be a fly ball to right. Carbo's under this one. So the Twins are down to their last out. So Rich Childs, 0 for 3 in the day. Here's the wind up by Eckersley in the pitch. Oh, and a single. So it keeps the game alive for the Twins. Another 0 for 3, Butch Weiniger. This will probably be Eckersley's last batter regardless. It looks like Stanley's ready to come in. I think it's Stanley out there. Nope. So the ground ball to short, and that should do it. Ovi Ostremski. And the Red Sox win 7-1. to one. So let's check the box score here. Eckersley pitches a complete game. Allowing 8 hits, 1 run. Scattered 8 hits. One run that was earned in this game. No walks and four strikeouts. Pitch count of 119. He closes the ERA at 2.76. The ERA would be a 4.06 in the actual season, so he's outperforming this. And he's 4 and 2 in this one. Wow. He's only 1 and 1. That's weird. Sure I get the right date here. Yeah, May 4th, 1978. Eckersley was only 1-1. One and one. He's 4-2 and two here, so he had a lot of no decisions. And he won 20 games in 78, so he's on the pace to win over 20 games, so that'll be interesting to see. See if he can do that. I think that's the idea. I think he was 20-8 in 1978. Let's double check to be sure. Yep, 20-8. 35 starts, so he had seven starts where he had no decision. So he has definitely has a possibility of uh, getting well over 20 wins. Could could be the Cy, could be a Cy Young candidate. 
Thomas Garling lasted four and a third innings, allowed nine hits, three runs, no walks, and four strikeouts. The Twins bullpen, Johnson and Johnson. So they didn't do that bad. It sounded worse than it was. But, uh, yeah, it was mostly inherited runners they allowed to score. John T. Johnson didn't even allow it, but wow. Between them, they have a 9.39 ERA and a 6.23 ERA. The Twins bullpen an 8.76 ERA, so the Twins bullpen is definitely uh, <laughs> not good. So, all right, let's check the Red Sox batting order. See, Burleson was two for five with a homer, two runs scored in RBI. Ram Dog was one for four with a run scored. Jim Ed Rice was three for four with a run scored in RBI. Yastrzemski was three for four with a run scored in RBI. Colin Fisk was one for four. Freddie Lynn was three for four with an RBI and a run scored. Butch Hobson was, did not manage a hit. So he was the only Red Sox without a hit all day. But on the plus side, he did not commit an error either. So Hobson not committing an error is a win for that. <laughs> So Bernie Carbo, two for four with a couple RBIs, big two two RBIs single that kept the Red Sox going in the fourth. It was just all they they, they would need. Rohammer was one for four. So that is it. So thank you for joining me. It's been Eric from Higher Ground Gaming, and we will see you in the next 1978 Red Sox replay. So the Red Sox record improves to 15 and nine and the twins to 15 and 11. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.